Hello, Carl Hein here to review Paul Brooks Locked In Thought. I'm a little conflicted on what kind of rating to give this product. I would say it's a two to a four star rating. It really is going to depend upon uh, A, how much you like the effect, and uh, we'll go into some details of whether it will be for you or not for you. I think the reviews from customers are going to be pretty mixed. I think some people are really not going to like this, and some people are really going to love it. Uh, so what you get is a very simple packaging, which I like. Uh, you have a just a lock and you have the instructions and the password to uh, basically watch, uh, look at a PDF online. Uh, there's no video as of now, although that might be coming down the road, I believe. Uh, and I think the video would be helpful uh, to at least see the performance of the, the routine as well as a few of the moves and make it a little bit clearer from the PDF. Although I think the PDF does a pretty good job of explaining uh, what it is, uh, how the method works, and how to perform it. I think Paul did a pretty good job on that with a few minor exceptions. Uh, the basic idea of the effect is you have a lock on your keychain. So you walk around with the lock on your keychain. Uh, I think this is more designed for social environments, although it certainly could be done for certain person, uh, certain styles of performance uh, in a professional environment and walk around as well. Uh, so you tell the spectator uh, the code there, then proceed to unlock the code uh, that you have. So in this case, I have my code, I, they would unlock it from my keychain. And then uh, you, tell, you teach them how to set an other code. So you tell them to push down and to set their own and then lock, lock it again. And then what you're going to try to do is you're going to try to guess what that code is. Uh, so basically what you're doing in this effect is that you are uh, reading the spectator's mind uh, for th a three-digit number and then using that three-digit number to unlock the lock. Now, uh, to start off with, a couple people would might say, well, why don't you just have them write down a three-digit number or think of a three-digit number and then tell them the number if you're going to try to read their mind, uh, which I think is true and obviously will fit some people's presentations better. But I think having a physical object where the spectator is physically involved with it, especially if this is an object that people are familiar with, uh, I think really works quite well. And I think it really um, cements in their mind the, the memory of that effect. So I think that the lock is a really good idea. And I think that the overall presentation is, is, is very smart. I can see certainly in certain people, certain mentalists uh, routining, even magicians as well, that this would be a very strong effect. It could be, I will, not, not necessarily going to say a reputation maker, but I think it will be a reputation maker to a few people. Of course, again, a lot of that depends upon your own specific performance style. Uh, the lock you get is not a gimmick lock. This is a normal lock, uh, although it's a very specific lock. Uh, and I think uh, for, as far as the pricing of the product goes, uh, Paul had to go through and examine many different styles of locks. And then once he found the specific lock, uh, find specific ones uh, that worked for this effect. Uh, so uh, based upon the time and the money invested in being able to find the right lock, I think it's it, uh, to go out and do that yourself, it's certainly going to cost you a whole lot more. Uh, and uh, basically what Paul's doing in the PDF is teaching you how to pick the lock. So the, ascent, the essence of the method is that they set their own lock, uh, their own combination, uh, in the course of your routine and as you're talking and the, your patter, for lack of a better word, you are secretly unlocking the lock so now that you can look and peek and see exactly what their three-digit number is. You then reveal the number uh, to the spectator and then once you reveal the number, you show that it does in fact unlock the lock. Uh, I like that progression uh, and it's the way that Paul constructed his routine I think is very smart and I think very deceptive uh, when done correctly. Uh, I like that you guess the number first rather than try to uh, just unlock the lock because that would suggest maybe that it's a special lock, which it's not. Uh, whereas if you're just guessing the number, uh, you're kind of getting a one ahead by using the lock picking principle to get one ahead to determine the number and then still be able to unlock it at the end. Uh, and they can of course make sure that no other number works. So what he's doing again, he's teaching you a method to secretly unlock this lock. I worked on this for quite a while um, and uh, I had pretty good success. It's fairly um, uh, reliable, uh, but it's not the type of effect where, where you, it's definitely, first of all, it's gonna definitely take a lot of practice. I think that's one thing that a lot of people are gonna have a problem with is that there's a lot of practice, not just to learn how to unlock the lock, but also to pr present and to perform this in the right way. 
Uh, now, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think practice is a good thing for magic tricks. However, uh, the type of practice that's involved with this, because of the nature of how the lock picking works, it's not so straightforward as one might think. Uh, a lot of effects you get, you see exactly the path you have to take and you can see exactly how you have to practice to get there. Well, this one takes uh, practice, but also takes a lot of figuring out. You actually have to figure out how your specific lock works based upon his instructions. And I think that's going to be a problem for some people. I don't think everybody's brains work quite like Paul's does or mine does. And I think uh, that kind of creative process and figuring out the method actually to be able to make the trick work is not so intuitive for everybody. So I think that's going to be one problem. Uh, secondly, I think there is a little bit of a problem in the instructions uh, and that this uh, lock that he's using now is not the original lock from when the PDF was written up. This is a slight discrepancy in that uh, the instructions explain how to unlock the lock uh, from your fingertips, whereas with this particular lock, you really have to have the lock on your keychain. So you have to have the spectator unlock the lock, set their own combination, lock it back on your keychain. Uh, and then be able to do it. So it's a small discrepancy that uh, just to, you should probably be aware of and uh, it's possible to do it without the keychain, but it's definitely gonna be easier. In fact, in practicing, uh, because of the pressure I was putting on my finger, my fingers felt kind of numb the following day. So uh, it's not something, again, another reason why the practice of it is not necessarily for everybody. Having the strong fingers, depending upon the type of fingers you have, it could be easier or harder for you to actually do the method. Uh, and then the other thing is uh, the instructions and the presentations in fact are not going to be easy for everyone to be able to do. In fact, it's going to be very difficult for a lot of people depending upon the presentation style. Just the, to be able to give people the instructions, the respective instructions to how to set the combination without them messing it up. From my own uh, time practicing this and trying to perform it for a few friends of mine, it's not an easy thing to do. That's not to say that I don't think it's possible. I don't think that if you put the time and effort into it and you really decide you want to do this effect, uh, especially if you're a more experienced performer, I think that it can be a great effect for you and you can really get a lot out of it, which is why I say it could definitely be a four star for you because I think it really is a, a strong routine and Paul put a lot of thought into it. Uh, but I, I just do, I do feel though that a lot of people that get this uh, are not, are not going to be completely aware of A, the work that goes into it and B, how difficult it is to perform this effect very well, to be able to hide the method in your performance, as well as to be able to give very clear and precise instructions without being boring or very long. Uh, I think it takes some engaging personality. So I don't think the effect's for everybody, but it sounds like something that you would, you would be into. I think it really is a great effect. Uh, and I can imagine in Paul's hands, unfortunately, because I don't have a video to see him doing it, but I can imagine in Paul's hands that it would play very well. And uh, it's a great to be able to have this with you all the time. It fits on your keychain. It's a very natural thing to have in your keychain. I agree with Paul. It's not like it's an unusual thing. Uh, you can just say it's for your gym or you travel a lot. In my case, I travel a lot. I use this. It's always great to, it is always great to have a lock like this when you travel. So I think it's that part of it's really great and it's a nice thing to have on you all the time to be able to have an somewhat impromptu effect as long as you have this on your keychain. Uh, so that is Paul Brooks Locked in Thought. Uh, if it, the, the, uh, the effect interests you and you don't mind putting some work in, I think it's definitely worth your investment. Otherwise, you might want to do a little more research and make sure it's really the product for you uh, before you go ahead and purchase it. Hope that helps.